Today we return to take a more detailed look at nuclear magnetic resonance or NMR spectroscopy. We should recall that its low resolution NMR spectrum is going to have three distinct peaks. The first one resulting from this single hydrogen, which is very much de-shielded because it's attached to the very electronegative oxygen. The second peak coming from these two hydrogens, which are in their own distinct chemical environment, attached to this carbon, which is attached to the electronegative oxygen. And finally, the third and least de-shielded of the hydrogens would be these three in the same chemical environment, giving this peak. All of these peaks in NMR spectroscopy are relative to tetramethylsilane as a molecule against which all other readings are standardized. But students of higher level IB chemistry are also required to look at the high resolution NMR spectrum. And if we were to zoom in on each of these peaks, you would note that this peak, which corresponds to three hydrogens, is actually split into a triplet in the ratio of one is to two is to one. And this peak, two hydrogens, but having a neighbor that has three hydrogens split in a ratio of one to three to three to one. And this one that has a neighbor that has no hydrogens on it, this oxygen being its neighbor to this hydrogen, having just a singlet. This signal splitting pattern can be determined by looking at the neighboring carbon and how many hydrogens it contains and then using Pascal's triangle. So let's move in and take a closer look. First we look at the nature of the reference molecule TMS, tetramethylsilane. TMS contains four methyl groups, each with three hydrogens. These 12 hydrogens can be described as all having a chemically equivalent position. And when placed in the NMR machine, all of these 12 hydrogens behave in the same way. So with 12 hydrogens all having the same chemical shift, it leads to a significant peak. And in addition, because of the unique nature of the TMS molecule with silicon at the middle and four methyl groups, this particular chemical shift is very far away from the shifts of other molecules. TMS is very useful as a reference molecule because it's easy to remove when it's mixed with the sample that you're actually testing for. Because it's very stable, unreactive or inert, it does not affect the purity of the sample. It's easily removed because of its high volatility. Ethanol has this structure and as you can see you have one hydrogen here in its own unique environment two hydrogens here and three hydrogens here this hydrogen here can be described as being highly de-shielded so with the electrons in the oxygen to hydrogen bond being kept closer to the oxygen it means that the magnetic field from the NMR device has a greater influence on this hydrogen and its alpha state and its beta state are split to a much larger extent. So then it absorbs a point in the NMR spectrum away from the reference standard tetramethylsilane, which doesn't have any significant amount of de-shielding. So it's this relative amount of de-shielding that determines the unique signature of a group of hydrogens in NMR spectroscopy. These two hydrogens would also be in what's described as a chemically equivalent position and they would have their own chemical shift and so too would these three hydrogens. But before we return to consider the NMR spectrum of ethanol Let's take a quick look to review how hydrogen-1 NMR spectroscopy happens. The nucleus of a hydrogen atom contains a single proton. And this proton typically can have some random spin like this or a spin like this. 
the hydrogens in a molecule like ethanol, when they're not placed into a magnetic field, these spins take on a very random nature. So there could be any mix of hydrogens going in one direction and hydrogens going in another direction. But when an NMR spectrum is run on the sample, then the first thing that happens is the sample is placed within a magnetic field. Some of the hydrogens are aligned with the field, typically like a north pole being attracted to a south pole. It's what one magnet would do when it's in the presence of another. So some of these hydrogens are attracted to the magnetic field and they align with it, arrowheads in opposite direction to symbolize the idea of a north and a south pole being attracted to each other and that being of a lower energy level, that being a more stable arrangement when the hydrogens with their own electromagnetic field which is brought about by the fact that they have charge and they have a spin their magnetic field aligns with the magnetic field of the NMR device then some hydrogens on the other hand align against the field and while this kind of behavior would not happen at, at the big scale level at this atomic level it is possible for some of the hydrogens to align against the field and to have a higher energy they go into the beta state and they're energized in a way similar to when you put a north pole with a north pole of a magnet or a south pole with a south pole of a magnet so with this split in energy when radio waves get introduced into the sample in the NMR machine there's a certain frequency of radio waves that allows particles in the alpha state to get knocked out of the alpha state go into the beta state and then as they come back down to the alpha state they release this energy and this is the value that is used for characterizing the nature of a particular type of hydrogen it's referred to as the chemical shift because the value that you get here for the hydrogens in the molecule are compared relative to the sample of tetramethylsilane in the machine. And the difference, the relative difference between the two samples is termed the chemical shift. So the low resolution NMR spectrum for ethanol would look like this with the zero value way upfield for tetramethylsilane followed by a peak that corresponds to three hydrogens from the CH3 another one that's relatively nearby corresponding to two hydrogens from the CH2 and finally a hydrogen a single hydrogen that's way downfield from TMS to correspond to the OH it's important to note that when you look at a low resolution NMR spectrum that you do not measure the length of the line as a way of determining the number of hydrogens the position of each line is simply an indicator of its chemical shift relative to TMS to determine the number of hydrogens you need to be provided with what is known as the integration trace and typically on many of the textbook questions that you see a sign like this is introduced and next to it would be written 3 2 or 1 this is termed the integration trace but when we consider the high resolution spectrum of ethanol each of the single peaks in the low resolution spectrum appears as a peak split into a distinct pattern and here for these three identical hydrogens which are closest to the TMS reference in the low resolution spectrum we see a split where the line in the middle is twice as long as two lines on either side 
a triplet, in other words, split in the ratio of one to two to one. This triplet, which appears where the signal of these three hydrogens should be, comes about because the carbon that neighbors these three hydrogens has two hydrogens of its own. And these two influence the field of these three hydrogens, creating this split. To determine how many hydrogens are causing this particular pattern, we use Pascal's triangle and we get one to two to one. Here, because this peak corresponds to these two hydrogens and its neighboring carbon has three hydrogens of its own, then here, in accordance with the next tier on Pascal's triangle, the third tier, we get a split of one, three, three, one. This hydrogen C has no splitting pattern because it's not attached to a carbon that contains hydrogens. And it also does not influence these. So this is known as signal splitting and provides important evidence in further elucidating or figuring out the structure of an organic molecule using spectroscopic methods. And the nature of the splitting can become quite complicated for certain molecules. But students of IB chemistry should confine signal splitting to simple examples like ethanol. So let's consider an example like this one. How many peaks would you expect in the NMR spectrum of this molecule? And what would be the pattern of signal splitting? Stop and think about your answer. Did you say these two hydrogens would be way downfield of TMS because it's close to the electronegative BR? And did you say that this would be closer to TMS because it is further from the electronegative BR? In the low resolution spectrum, you would expect two distinct peaks, one for the two hydrogens further away from TMS and another one for the three hydrogens closer to TMS. As for the high resolution spectrum, then you would expect the peak that corresponds to the three hydrogens to be split in a ratio of one to three to three to one. And the peak that corresponds to the two hydrogens to be split in a ratio of one to two to one.